Hi, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, we're going to be talking about creating a Canvas Power App from SharePoint. Now, this is part of an ongoing series where we're looking at creating a basic Power App to replace a paper-based process. Now, the process we have chosen is a instant reporting template. So this is a paper form that gets filled out by employees. Uh, they have to fill it out, scan it in, email it to people, and it's quite a long-winded process which could be easily automated. Now, this process could also simply be a process which is like an accident report or a expense report, travel request, or any type of inspection form that you're currently filling out um, and you want to provide a digital solution for. So in this video, We've chosen that SharePoint is going to be our data source. So this is where we're going to store all of our data that's captured as part of our incident form. So the first thing we need to do is go to our SharePoint site. Now I've just got a test SharePoint site here. Um, and the first thing you'd want to be able to do is create your SharePoint list where you're going to store your data. So to do that, we click on the new button across the top and then click on list. And then it's going to ask us what we want to call our list. I'm just going to type in this is my incident data because this is where I'm going to keep all my incident reports. Then you click on create and this is then going to create your list. Once you create your list, now is the time that you need to create all the fields which are going to be used as part of your app. Um, now to add a new field, all we need to do is click on this add column and it's going to tell us the different types of fields we could possibly add into our list. Now these different fields are going to affect the way that they then appear inside of our Power App later on. So for example, a single line of text, um, which will come through like a small box like this, whereas a multiple lines of text would be a much bigger box for like a description or a summary. We've got things like locations, if we're tagging a, a particular place, numbers. Now, when we're using things like numbers or currencies, that's so if we're capturing, say, for example, a... Um, expense request form, we would want to make sure we had a currency value um, for what we were actually submitting. So then afterwards, if we were to export this data into Excel, it knows the format of the data is currency, so we can do formulas based on that exported data afterwards. There are other types of fields like yes, no's, uh, which can be used for sort of saying, is this um, a certain type of request, yes or no. There's person fields for actually tagging people to say who is the actual employee. Now this is like a um, look up to your active directory so you'll actually be able to pull out people actual employees and you have to manually enter every single person then you've got things like date and time so you can actually tag a date and time of the event just keep in mind that within sharepoint there are there's also system fields for things like date and time so every time that uh, an item is created it will store the date and time of the creation as well as who created that item as well as the modified dates so if any of the items are updated in sharepoint the modified date and time and who modified it will also be updated as well so you don't necessarily have to add a date and time for every type of um, uh, every type of scenario We've got choice, so that could be a drop down, say um, what type of incident is it? Um, and we've got uh, things like hyperlinks and pictures if you're wanting to uh, potentially uh, capture like a photo or something like that and then store that inside of your list as well. So just looking at my form, I'm just now looking at what are the fields that I need to capture. So if I look at this reported by, I don't need to actually create that because as I was mentioning before, the created by will always be captured inside of SharePoint of who created the item. I might want a title, um, so, uh, so the title of the role, uh, the date of the report. Um, so I am going to add a date field for this. I'm not just going to use it created because it might be that someone submits the incident report um, the following day, for example. Uh, the incident number I don't need because every SharePoint item has a unique ID that I can use. And then I'm going to create things like the incident type and the date of incident. So to create those, um, all I need to do, again, click on this add column. I'm going to create an incident type. Um, so I'm going to click on choice and then I'm going to say incident type. And then I might put something like accident or fire incident maybe. Oops. Uh, employee accident. But you can add as many of these different types in uh, to this box as you like. We can set a default if we wanted to. Um, that will just automatically populate it, but you can override it. But at the moment, I'm just going to leave the default as uh, none. And then I'm going to click on save. And that's my first column added. Now I'm going to go through my form and I'm going to add in all of the fields uh, into my list. Um, 
I'm actually going to use the power of time travel now. Um, and in a second, all of these columns are going to be appeared. Now I've created um, some more of those fields. I'm just going to add one more, which is going to be um, a person field, and it's going to be who the witness of the incident was. So by clicking on there, I can type in witness, and now I've got a people field for my witness. The next step is I would also uh, create a couple of items inside of SharePoint. Now, what we're going to do in a second is generate our Power App from this data. So it's important to have a few items of data inside of your list. So to do that, we just click on this new button across the top and then we fill out our form. So I can say title um, might be uh, incident in warehouse. Incident type is uh, it was a employee accident. Um, the date of incident we're going to say it is uh, yesterday. Uh, the location uh, it was in the warehouse. The employee that was affected uh, we're going to say was uh, Chris. Um, we're going to say the incident description was tripped over a box in the warehouse. Follow up action, ensure that all boxes have been moved. And the witness is going to be myself. Um, and then when I click on save, that's then going to add my data into this list. Adding data into your list is just going to make it really easy. So when you generate your Power App, you can see exactly where uh, these different fields are going to show up. So the next step is to actually now create your Canvas Power App from this data. So to do that, we simply click on this Power Apps button here and we click on Create an App. And then this is going to ask us now, what do we want to call our Power App? So I'm going to call this Incident Reporting. Uh, once we've given it a name, looks like I've already got an app called that. So I'm just going to take off the end bits there. So we've got Instant Report. So this is going to be my uh, app name. I'm going to click on create and then what that's going to do is going to create a new mobile application um, through Power Apps uh, using my data and it's now modeling it and creating um, a sort of based on a, a basic template my Power App to really streamline the, uh, the development process. So it's going to build a lot of different things for me. Once it's finished creating, you'll see that I've got a number of things now on, my, on the left hand side. So it's automatically created me a home screen, a browse screen. It's created a detailed screen for my forms. And I've also got an edit screen so I can edit those items as well. What you'll also notice it's got a default kind of blue color. And the first thing you might want to do is just change that color by selecting the theme on the drop down and then selecting a color which better fits your kind of um, brand. So I'm just going to select this purple one over here. Now, we also have a follow up video where at the moment there's only um, a certain set of default themes that you can uh, you can have directly from Power Apps. So if you wanted to create your own theme, we do have a separate video uh, which shows you how you can create your own custom color theme. Uh, but that then ties up how we've now created our Power App from our SharePoint. Um, and there'll be follow up videos now to show you how we're going to customize this even further. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you need help, we do offer professional services, including bespoke development, pre-built solutions, training packages, and a pay-as-you-go support service, which bridges those knowledge gaps within your existing team. All of our employees are based in the UK and have years of experience deploying solutions with small businesses, as well as large enterprise organizations. We offer a free consultation with a no obligation quotation. If this all sounds good, drop us an email Ask for Dougie and I look forward to hearing from you soon.